Hey everyone, my name is Greg Peterson. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how we use chemicals here on our family farm in Kansas. Uh, behind me is a rogator sprayer that we use to apply chemicals and fertilizer here um, on our fields. And uh, the process for this kind of application uh, is split up into several steps. Before a farmer is allowed to apply chemicals, he or she must first become a licensed chemical applicator. In Kansas, this is done by studying this 100-page applicator manual and passing a test based on the information found within it. This manual teaches about different plants, weeds, and insects that chemicals can affect, how to use agrochemicals, how to read chemical labels, and how to protect yourself and the environment. Many farmers also have taken university courses and workshops based on these same topics. The point here is that the farmers who use chemicals on their farms are not naive or unaware of what these chemicals are or how they work. Most farmers are experts in chemical application or at the very least are highly trained in how to work with them. Preparation is a very important part of spraying. The first thing you must do is decide which field you're going to spray. Uh, this is done by taking into account um, the field conditions and the climate and the priority of what you need to spray first. The best time to spray is when weeds are still small and it isn't supposed to rain anytime soon, and it isn't very windy. Once you've decided when you can spray a field, you must decide what to spray. We often get advice from the experts at our local co-op or crop service center, where we buy most of our chemicals. Spraying is not as easy as it used to be, as weeds will become resistant if not sprayed at the right time with the right chemicals. Many times a combination of chemicals will be used instead of just one to provide different modes of action. The experts at these places are professionals at what they do and know exactly what each chemical does and what your best options are. Once you've made these decisions, you can calculate how much of each chemical goes into the particular sprayer mix. Uh, this is done by carefully reading labels like this on chemical containers. Once you calculate how much of each chemical to use, it is time to mix. The number one misconception that people seem to have with chemical application in agriculture um, is that people believe that farmers overuse chemicals or use large amounts of chemicals um, on their crops and in their fields. Uh, this, this couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, chemicals are very expensive and uh, in any given mix of spray that farmers are spraying on their field, um, the typical amount of water in that spray is up to 90 to 95 percent of the mix, uh, which means only 5 to 10 percent of, of what they're spraying, what is coming out of the booms, is actually chemical. And uh, not only that, but um, the chemicals are usually only made up of about 50% um, active ingredient. And so you're looking at a very, very, very small um, percentage of what they're actually spraying um, that's actually chemical. My friend Sarah does a great job of explaining the percentage on her blog, linked in the description. These calculations were done for the popular herbicide glyphosate, which is a chemical we use quite often on our farm. At an average rate of application, a farmer is only applying one soda can's worth of glyphosate per acre, which is about the size of a football field. The reason the solution is diluted so much is uh, to make the spray application process more efficient and to uh, use the least amount of chemicals possible uh, because chemicals are very expensive to purchase and um, farmers obviously do not want to spray more than they have to. The five ingredients I'm mixing in this video are 725 gallon of water, two bags of AMS, 15 gallon of glyphosate, eight gallon of 2,4-D, and one gallon of crop oil. This mix will be able to spray about 62 acres. First, AMS is added to water and stirred before starting the pump. AMS increases spreading and absorption into plants and overall effectiveness of the chemicals. The pump begins pumping the 725 gallon of water into the sprayer and the ingredients are slowly mixed in. The sprayer mixes or agitates the solution as the tank is filled. Once the mix is loaded, it is time to head to the field to spray. Almost every sprayer these days is equipped with a computer monitor like this one inside the cab. All right, so the first thing you do once you've got your, your field set up on the screen here is uh, you set a boundary around the outside of the field and the sprayer will keep track of that and make sure you don't spray outside of your boundary, like on any ditches or driveways, stuff like that. The sprayer keeps track of exactly how much you are spraying per acre and will sound an alarm if the rate is above or below the target. Too much and you are wasting money in spray. 
too little and the spraying might not be effective. The sprayer also utilizes amazing technology that automatically steers the sprayer, controls the height of the booms, and shuts off the spray wherever you've already sprayed. Here we are in the field um, spraying weed stubble. You can see the weeds have grown up since we harvested the wheat. We planted in the circle where the pivot goes and so you can see we already sprayed that. You can see the difference from where we sprayed and where we didn't spray. There's weeds where we haven't sprayed and there isn't weeds where we have. Here you can watch the auto shut off. It shuts off five, then four, three, and two, and then one. Five, four, three, two, one. did and uh, the green is where the application rate was at 12 gallon an acre and the red is where it was either just a little or a little a little under or a little over that amount and uh, what you don't want is pink there's a little tiny bit of pink down there and a few spots of pink up there but overall it looks pretty good once you've finished spraying you must write down everything that you've sprayed this can be done either on paper or with the monitor that was in the sprayer. This is Roundup Ready Alfalfa that we just planted. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to check out the rest of our blogs about chemicals and agriculture. This video only shows how we apply them. In the blogs we'll talk about why we use chemicals and whether or not they are safe.